Welcome to part two of the photosynthesis notes. I know you guys are all really pumped up about learning the details, so that's what we're going to get into for part two of the notes. The details of the light reactions primarily. But first let's start off with the chemical equation for photosynthesis and what photosynthesis actually is by definition. So here's a simple definition of photosynthesis process of using sunlight to create food. It's a little more complicated than that, but that is a good basic definition. Using sunlight to create food, and this is done again by uh, most plants, some bacteria, and other single-celled organisms. The chemical equation for photosynthesis is important to understand the process and how it all works. So let's go over the equation really quickly. Balanced equation. We have over here carbon dioxide plus water gives us glucose and oxygen. So there's the basics for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide and water used by the plant to create glucose and oxygen. Most importantly, that molecule right there. Without that molecule, life on Earth would not exist as we know it today. This oxygen is a waste product, but thank you plants for your waste product so that we have parts to allow our bodies to work correctly. So number seven, we're going to talk about the purpose of the light dependent reactions. I will simplify that by calling them the light reactions. And we're going to talk about the reactants and products, some of which you see up here. So the light dependent reactions or light reactions, very simply. Take place on the thylakoid membrane and supply the Calvin cycle, also known as the dark reactions with energy in the form of ATP and electrons in the form of NADPH. And something you might want to add to this NADPH between the P and the H there, I would put little dots to represent those two electrons that we're talking about. So NADP dot dot H to show those electrons. Important to recognize where the electrons are coming from when we get to the Calvin cycle a little bit later on. Next up, we're going to talk about the reactants and products. Big part of biology in general, but specifically photosynthesis. Are what are the parts going in and what are the products coming out? That's why we're talking about this process, because of glucose primarily. So here are our reactants. Of course, it takes sunlight for an initial energy source for the light reactions. We also are using ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and NADP plus. To make NADPH, we need to start with this guy, oops, this guy right here, NADP plus. And we're also getting water, and again, that comes from our equation right there, water going in. And we'll see why in the light reactions plants need water, one major reason. And here are the products, and they're also uh, arranged the same way so that you can see how they work out. ATP is made from ADP, NADPH is made from NADP+. Oxygen, gas, is coming from the splitting of water. And that is in the next one right here, but we'll put it on here anyways, called photolysis. To go from water to gas. It's called photolysis. And that's what we're going to talk about in number eight. Explain the process of photolysis and why it is necessary. Alright, so what is photolysis? Let's start there exactly what it sounds like if you know the parts of the word. Meaning photo standing for light, lice meaning to break. So 
we are using sunlight to break up water into gas. So again, you probably want to be able to relate the parts of the word. Split or break, either one is fine. Relate the parts of the word to what it actually means. Why it is necessary for photolysis to take place is because of the electrons that need to be replaced. And you'll see this when we go through the light reactions, and especially in the light reactions video that I suggest you watch as well. The electrons that are going from the light reactions to the dark reactions being carried by this molecule right here, NADPH, have to be replaced once they leave the light reactions. And that's why water is split. It's taking the electrons that are holding that or those hydrogens to that oxygen. Moving on to objective nine. We're going to look at the flow of electrons through the electron transport chain. We're going to abbreviate, and you should too, ETC. We'll talk about the energy carriers, energy slash electron carriers. All right, photosystem one was actually discovered first, but it actually kind of happens second in the process. It is the second set of specialized proteins called pigments that re-energize electrons, E minus, for electrons. Second set of pigments that re-energize electrons with sunlight. You see where that comes into play when we get to the light reactions further down. Photosystem 2, discovered second, but it is the first set of pigments that uses photolysis, the process I just described, to get electrons from splitting water using sunlight. Again, recall what photolysis means, using light to break water into gas. When we break the water, that's where the electrons come from. There's actually two electrons that we're going to talk about. Next up is the electron transport chain, just simply abbreviated ETC. There's your definition for ETC, a set of proteins that transport electrons and pump protons, hydrogen ions, H+, into the lumen. A set of proteins that transport electrons and pump protons into the lumen. We'll see what that means in just a little bit, or how that works. And then last up, NADP plus and NADPH. NADP plus is the electron acceptor in the light reactions. NADPH is the electron carrier. Again, remember NADP dot dot right there to represent those two electrons. Delivers electrons to the dark reactions. So NADP plus accepts the light re accepts the electrons. NADPH delivers the electrons. And again, it's delivering to them, delivering them to the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions. All right, so there's a good picture to represent the light reactions, and this can be found from the website under the animation that talks about zooming in. This is the one that starts off with an oak leaf that you'll see, or that maybe you have seen already, in the video. So here's the picture from that animation that's going to help kind of understand a lot of how the light reactions work. These guys right here are the two photosystems, photosystem 2, photosystem 1. We're going to go left to right, but they are numbered out of order because of the discovery times. There's water down here. There's a hydrogen ion. These little black dots are electrons. You may be able to see the little E inside of them. Here are our two products of the light reactions, NADPH and ATP. And here is an enzyme 
that is creating ATP. So it pretty much tells you what it does, ATP synthase. So first, let's trace the flow of electrons. And you can just do this using arrows, but since I have this fancy gadget, I'm going to use it. The electrons that we get in the system come from water, splitting water into hydrogens and oxygens. So here's the electron that comes in from splitting water. The result of this would be oxygen and two hydrogens. You can draw those in if you like. So I'll make sense out of this. Oops, sorry. An oxygen and two hydrogens. So gas because of photolysis. And again, there's my light beam that comes in called a photon. A particle of light that comes in and zaps this thing with energy. So this electron is going to show, be shown going up to show that it is energized. All right, so there's the first step. Photosystem 2 is where the electron gets energized. The next step is electron transport chain, and that's what these three guys are for. Three shapes to represent three different proteins that we don't need to know the names of. Passing the electrons from protein to protein to protein. You'll see that electron is moving down to represent it actually losing energy. But the energy is not totally lost, it's actually used to pump protons from the stroma, which is just outside the thylakoid, to the inside of the thylakoid called the lumen. So let's label those. Stroma is the outside of the thylakoid. So down here is the lumen, and that is the inside of the thylakoid. You can think of them as two frisbees kind of placed back to back. So a thylakoid, this disc, has membrane, but cut open, it would look kind of like two frisbees. So the inside space here between those two frisbees is called the lumen. All right, then the electron gets to photosystem one, where it's going to be re-energized by light. So the electron is re-energized, gets passed up to this next protein, and that is where the electron carrier is getting made, NADPH, is going to come out of there once it gets those electrons, remember NADP dot dot H, coming in is the NADP plus and a phosphate. So NADP plus and a phosphate come here to this protein, get stuck together with a couple of electrons. There's actually two electrons here at all these spots. Combining NADP plus to a phosphate, or sorry, that's a mistake. Phosphate is in the next step. Combining NADP plus with a hydrogen, I apologize. Combining NADP plus with a hydrogen ion, H plus, to create NADPH, those two electrons getting stuck on right there to NADPH. The last part of this has to do with ATP synthase, which again is an ACE, so we know it's an enzyme that makes ATP, synthesizes ATP. All of these hydrogens that are getting pumped in here over here on the left in ETC number one, this is kind of a second ETC. So over here in this first ETC we talked about, there's a lot of hydrogens getting pumped in, and there's hydrogens resulting from the splitting of water. Those hydrogens are going to go through ATP synthase to create ATP from ADP, oops, that's a D, and a phosphate. So ADP and a phosphate will come in. ATP will be the result. These are the products of the light reactions that will power the dark reactions to make glucose. Last part, chemiosmosis, is this process here of the enzyme utilizing that diffusion of hydrogens to create ATP.